Jennifer Garner is a major Swifty. The actress took to Instagram to share photos and videos of her time watching Taylor Swift on stage in Kansas City on Friday night. She first shared a snap of herself posing with opening act Reese Abrams and then a video wearing a ton of friendship bracelets that were given to her by fellow Swifties. Quote, our minds are still blown by the generosity of spirit, ferocity, and stamina of Taylor Swift, Jen wrote in part. Jennifer went on the night where Taylor premiered the new music video, I Can See You, which stars her ex Taylor Lautner, Joey King, and Presley Cash. Taylor, who dated the singer in 2009, famously inspired Back to December, and Joey and Presley both appeared in her music video, Mean, in 2011. After the Enchanted Singer debuted the new video, she brought the threesome out on stage with her. Back in 2010, Access Hollywood spoke with the singer about her Speak Now album, and at the time, she reflected on being in control of her own destiny. You have been on a whirlwind. I just saw you in uh, New Orleans for the NFL kickoff Sunday. It's a Thursday night thing. Um, how are you keeping everything together? How, how's the whirlwind? Uh... <laughs> the whirlwind everything. Um, it's been really wonderful because I have actually been touring since I was like 15. Yeah. So I've kind of gotten used to it. Um, and of course, you're doing a lot more stuff when you're getting ready for an album. But um, I just mentally prepare myself and I'm like, I'm going to be busier than ever during the next six months of my life and just enjoy all of it and remember all of it. But you also had a pretty good, uh, not mentor, but maybe, you know, example on the road with Kenny Chesney, right? And yeah. what he did. I did get to do some shows with Kenny. That was really fun. Like, one of the things I'm really thankful for is getting to uh, tour with every headliner country artist. I mean, I opened up for all of them. And yeah. so I got to see all of all the things that they did, all the hard work they put into it, and um, they were great examples. Yeah, can you see how a pro does it? Yeah. And, they, and how they need to save themselves for, you know, like take care of themselves on the road, because a lot of times that's not usually what happens. And you get spent on the road and you don't, you know, conserve and what have you. So mm -hmm. it's nice to have those guys out there and, and people that have kind of little mentors, huh? Absolutely. And now you've taken the world by storm. You opened up for them. Now you've got your own thing going on. You know, I mean, geez, the last album was what, 10, 10 million? Or? It, it was a good couple of years. <laughs> yeah. it was, it's been really great. And I loved going on my first headlining tour and just getting to play in like, Gillette Stadium in Boston, like on our own. It was just, it was such a great first tour and it lasted 15 months. The Fearless Tour was something I'm never going to forget. Yeah. You know, I, I did a lot of stuff with um, Ricky Martin for years and I remember sitting with him in New York um, in a hotel and we're chatting about a whole bunch of stuff and he'd just come off of selling 17 million albums and he was talking about the build up, the expectation for the next album. Do you feel any of that pressure? having to follow up something that was absolutely, you know, huge? Well, um, I think for me, it's all about if I'm proud of it. Mm. Uh, and that's, that's, that's it for me. Like, if I've said everything that I wanted to say about the last two years, if I know that I worked hard on it, if I know that I put everything that I had yeah. and everything I am into that record, then that's, that's the biggest part of it. Um, so for me, of course, I'm always going to be anxious and nervous because I care. Uh, I care about everything, every yeah. single part of this, every single aspect of my career because I love it so much. So th I'm always going to have those stressed out moments where I'm like, <laughs> what, what, what's, what are they going to think of it, you know? But, <laughs> uh, but I know that I love it and I know that I'm proud of it. So I think that's, that's a good starting point. And the feedback so far for the singles has been really good. So that's, that's nice. Yeah, that is nice. Right? That's, that's been really nice. Because you don't know that. until you throw it out there. I know, you don't. Um, and I didn't exactly throw it out there. It kind of leaked. Right. So I was like, well, I didn't really have any time to be nervous about it. And all the positive feedback and going number one immediately on iTunes and doing mm -hmm. great at radio. Like, I'm, I'm very happy with it. Is there ever any sort of hesitancy in writing so openly? And like you've talked about this song each one's about somebody. <laughs> so did you give them a heads up and say, oh, by the way, or are they just going to hear it when they hear it? I think they're just going to hear it when they hear it. Um, I've been really, uh, I've been really like secretive about this whole record as far as playing it for people. I've only played it for a few people, even my closest friends. Um, and <laughs> I don't think I'm going to give anybody heads up that they're that they're the inspiration for songs on the record because they're gonna know. 
they'll know pretty much. They're definitely going to know when it comes out. So I might as well not like uh, give them the heads up and have them be like anxious for until it comes out. Exactly. Are you anxious at all? For them to hear it and maybe some sort of feedback at some point? There's definitely going to be some feedback. <laughs> I, I can assure you. Um, but for me, it's interesting. I've never been afraid of uh, telling the whole story right. in the form of music because I think that's just kind of having written songs for my formative years uh, when I was like 12, 13. Anytime I would feel loneliness or pain or, uh, I don't know, just rejection, I would kind of transfer that into, it's okay because I can write a song about this later. Right. And it's a good so, outlet. I've lived that way ever since, and uh, it's just been the way I process emotions, really. Is it, um, is it tough sometimes to, to lay it all out there like that, or is that the only way you know? That's really the only way that I know how to do things. I don't think I would be able to tell a partial story right. or a very general version of this is what happened. It's just, it's just part of it for me. That's part of why I love it. What's mine about? Mine is about... Uh, the idea of what a relationship could look like if I really found the real one. Hmm. Because I, I, this guy put his arm around me and it was by the water and I literally saw the entire relationship flash forward in that moment. It's really? pretty weird. Wow. Yeah, and so I wrote what it looked like. Wow, that's pretty, that's pretty perceptive. <laughs> it's kind of like a transcendental sci-fi movie. Yeah, it is kind of. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a deep like that. Oh my goodness. Um, when you mount a new tour uh, and, 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 and what have you, how much of it, since you have your hands in everything, how exhausting is that to a certain extent? Uh, I just love, I love living that way where you have control over everything that happens creatively and artistically. Like putting a tour together and knowing that you had a hand in every decision that was made, yeah. uh, everything from the way the trucks are wrapped to the way the <laughs> stage looks to every single cue of the curtains. It's just like, I live for that. I just love it. I don't think I could delegate to other people to make creative decisions like writing the songs or um, making choices for which songs go on the record. I. I have a really good group of people around me that let me make all those calls, and I'm very thankful for that. Yeah, but what's nice is, is that you get to control your own destiny. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's something, that's a responsibility that I'm not scared to take on, you know, where you, I don't ever want to look back and think um, somebody else made that decision, and yeah. I, I wasn't in charge of that. Talk about your decision to sing that particular song at the VMAs. The decision to perform Innocent on the VMAs was very in line with what the album is about. And the album, it's called Speak Now. It's about saying, saying what you need to say at the moment that you need to say it. And I had a bunch of different options going into the VMAs. I could have sung a different song. I could have not gone. I could have done a bunch of different things. But I felt like going to the VMAs and singing a song about how I had felt um, it, it seemed like the right call if I'm going to live my life in the way that I wrote that album. And the response from anybody on that? How did it go? I know that my daughter loved the song. <laughs> um, oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell her I said thank you. Uh, we'll do that. <laughs> um, but uh, the response to that, did any response back from um, anybody in particular? I got a lot of text messages from a lot of people. Yeah. And it was really good to get a positive feedback from a song that's so personal and it's, uh, it's, it says a lot in that song. And, um, you know, for me, it just, it means a lot to get positive feedback from people I love, people in my life, and people on Twitter and Facebook and on my website. It just, um, it really, really made me smile. Is, um, you're very good at writing songs about people and letting them stand a as they are and letting people interpret either A, who they may be about or maybe take that into their own lives and make it part of their own lives. Is that kind of the magic of, of being able to write your own songs and perform them and have, have people actually listen to them on the radio and enjoy them and sing, sing to them with their boyfriends? For me, the best part about the whole thing is uh, knowing in my mind and in my memory where the song started. Whether I was in the middle of a conversation with one of my friends and I got completely distracted because this idea hit me out of nowhere, or it was 4 a.m. and I woke up with this melody in my head that I couldn't, I couldn't get it out. Um, and knowing where the song starts and then seeing where it goes from there. Because for me, it starts from a very personal place of this is something I went through. I see the face of the person it's about. I'm writing the song to that person. 
And then it goes out into the world and all of these people apply it to their lives mm. and to their problems. And I think it's, in a way, it makes all of us feel like we're not alone in feeling what we feel. Speaking of people who know how to do that, um, you tweeted that you met Sir Paul McCartney? Yes. A fellow who's apparently pretty good at writing songs. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about that. <laughs> Meeting Sir Paul McCartney was amazing. Um, it was an unbelievable experience just uh, meeting someone who I respect so much. Um, mm -hmm. And the concert was unbelievable. Um, it was sort of surreal for me because in the backstage area, it was only a few people. It was me, Emmy Lou Harris, Faith Hill, and Sir Paul McCartney. So company. And I was like, this can't be happening. This can't be actually real. Um, and I just, I just couldn't. I, I think I was stuttering so much when I met him that I was just like, I was like, you don't even know. Like, I, I, I just. I just love you so much, and I just respect you so much, and I just was, and he was so cool. He yeah. was just so incredibly down to earth, and it was really wonderful. Um, my daughter just wants to know, since she's 16, and soon she'll be moving out of the house in a couple of years, she heard that you moved out yes. on your own, so how is it? It's wonderful. It's wonderful, but I definitely waited till the right time in my life. For me, um, the right age was 20, and for all my friends, it was 18, because they went off to college. Yeah. Uh, but I'm glad that I'm glad that it happened at the right time for me. Um, I had put it off because I literally did not have time to move out. I was touring. Yeah, you were a little busy. But it was it was it's amazing having my own place that just feels like home, and it's it's wonderful.